Okay, so we ran into a little bit of a snag when we tried to install Active Directory, and that's because we didn't have the administrator password set. So on your server, what you need to do is you need to go to the Start menu. You need to go to Control Panel. And then you need to go to User Accounts. And then you need to say manage another account and hit continue. And then you need to go to administrator and you need to change the password. Okay. And when you change the password, you should use capital password 01, but instead of the A, you should use the at sign. Okay. So it should be capital P password 01 but instead of the A in password use the at sign which is shift uh, 2 yeah I went to start menu control panel user accounts and then I went to manage another account I click continue and then I go to administrator and I change the password to capital P password 01 and instead of the A I use the at sign okay and then what I can do after I've done that I can go back to the start menu and I can start that DC promo installation again And I can go next, next, create a new domain in a new forest, and next. Okay. No, you don't have admin. You don't have manage another user account. Okay, then you go back and you start the DC promo installation. And again, you create a new domain and a new forest. And then you should be brought here, which this is where we got stopped before, right? Okay. Okay, so wh what we do, again, we go to Start, we go to Control Panel, you with me there? Then we go to User Accounts, you with me there? and then you go to manage another account and you click on administrator and you click on change the password Okay, I can catch you guys up after if, if that be the need. I mean, um, again, this will all, you know, again, I'm screencasting all this. So my suggestion is to go back and watch it this week and do it on your own. I mean, I can only, it's, I know it's hard, but that's why I'm screencasting it. So you can go back and watch it. And 
so let me let me for people that are still with me again i i can help you guys after people that fell behind uh i click on next next and we're going to create a new domain and a new forest and this is where we're we're creating our fully qualified domain name so this is a, and they give you a, they you know they tell you a fully called did new forested domain and they give you an example of corpcontoso.com for the sake of our testbed environment we could we could use any domain we wanted to because we're enclosed right and we're not going out to the internet so I mean, if we wanted to use google.com or microsoft.com or facebook.com we could use that in here but we're not because it'll get us confused so I always fall back on what Microsoft, you know, back in the initial Microsoft training days. We're going to call this Dover Corp dot com. Dover Corp dot com. Okay. I well for the administrator account, I use capital password zero one, but I used a at sign for a instead of the a okay. so then I'm gonna go ahead and click next and what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a my domain it's gonna verify my net bios name and it's gonna tell me then what functional level do I want to create now, if you read this, what this what this concerns itself with, in general, if I work in a Windows environment with all Windows Server 2008 servers, I'm going to have more bells and whistles and functionality. But if I was working in an environment where I had some Windows Server 2008 servers or win and Windows Server 2003, then I would have to select the lower forest functional level. So I'd have to default to my lowest server that I have in my enterprise. Okay? You see what I'm saying? So in, in this virtual environment, we're going to be working with servers 2008 so we can select our fully functional level as windows server 2008 okay yeah but i want you to use dover corp but yeah you can but use dover corp for in here but yeah i said you can name it whatever you want to corp okay so the next thing then that pops up is and this is just this this if you remember nothing about Active Directory after you leave this class uh, and before you take the Microsoft classes, the one thing that you should always remember is that Active Directory and DNS are go hand in hand, right? They go hand in hand. Without uh, a function, you cannot run Active Directory without access to a DNS server. Okay. So right currently, right now, we do not have a DNS server in our environment. So what this screen is asking me, it's saying the first domain control in the forest must be a global catalog server. Don't have to worry about that now. You'll learn that in the Wind, the Wind Microsoft classes. Cannot be an RDC. Cannot. But we recommend that you install DNS server because this is the first server on this domain controller. If I if I had a DNS server on my thing, it would it would look at it, it would find it, and I could point it to that. But remember when we set up the IP settings, what did we point to as the DNS server? This machine, right? So what we're going to do is we need to install DNS. Most of your Microsoft Active Directory problems that occur are usually related to DNS problems. Okay. Now remember, the DNS servers that you would run internally to support your Microsoft network internally would not necessarily be the DNS servers that you use for what? internet access right so it's they're not they're not necessarily they probably are not the same thing okay so I'm gonna go ahead and click next yep yeah we're using 2008 yeah um, and so here it says this computer is at least one physical just say you're gonna have to say uh, yes rec recommend so it's going to ask you this. You're going to say yes, and then yes again. 
So because it's looking for uh, assigned and because of the virtualization issue. So just say yes and then yes. And then here's where it tells me that I'm actually where I'm actually installing my Active Directory files. So C Windows NTDS is the actual database folder, the actual log file, and then the sysvol file. Remember, Active Directory, and we'll talk about this next week, is just a modified access database. And we'll talk more about an Active Directory next week when we go in through it. Then it's going to ask me to what password I can do. Again, I can use password just password 01 for recovery. And then I'm going to click next, next, and it's going to go ahead and uh, continue with my Active Directory installation. Okay. Uh, now, because we're going to shut them down, so. So remember, this process to create a domain controller out of a Windows server is the same. This, uh, either you're a, a member server of a domain, which you'll understand more next week when we have the client join the domain, you're a standalone server, or your domain controller. All the other domain controllers are like all other domain controllers, okay, within in a network. And remember... The thing that's, well, we'll see this next week, but the thing that separates a domain controller from a regular just member server is that it has a full working copy of Active Directory on it, right? And there you go. And you click Finish. And I'm not going to restart now because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut this down. But uh, when I go to Start and I go to Administrative Tools, I now have... I now have additional tools that we'll be talk well we'll be talking about users and computers next week. But I have three additional tools, actually a couple more too because I have DNS here and things like that. But I have now three tools that mention Active Directory, okay? And that's how I know it is a domain controller. When we come back next week and log in, we'll talk about logging in a domain controller. So when we come back next week, what we'll do is we'll talk more about Active Directory. We're going to go ahead and have the client join the domain, right? And we're going to create a user both locally and on the domain so that the client can log in to the uh, domain, okay? And we'll talk further more than what uh, functions servers take uh, in, a, in an enterprise environment. Now here, what I've noticed this week, obviously, <laughs> is... Uh, you got to go do this at home. You'll have, you have the, you know, the two screencasts now. I know they're not perfectly presented because I'm doing it in a classroom, but you know, they, I, I, it's all been visually. You can, and with a screencast, you can pause it, go back and look and do it and go back and, and do it. If you have the luxury of having two computers, that's even better because you could have the screencast running on a laptop or something or a tablet, and then you could look at and do the actual thing on the screen. But, you know, me doing this and me walking you through it, the purpose, like, you know, well, the reason I'm recording is online students so they can do it on their own. But the other thing is you can use it too. But if you go, if you just sit in this classroom and you just have walked through it with me, and let's say you even successfully did it, right, and everything got through, you still don't understand it because you've just been mimicking what I've done. So you got to do it on your own. And if you view it with the aid of the screencast, that's fine. But you got to do this on your own and understand it and listen, you know, and come back and, and, and do it that way. And then next week, there'll be the final screencast that'll take us over the hump that will get us with the actual client server. And then after that is set up, you have the ability to do with anything with a client and a server in a network, you know, and play around with it. Okay. So uh, this week, LabSim 9.0 papers are due next week. The submission for papers is on Blackboard, 
and then the submission for your screenshots. And at the very least, again, this didn't take us that long. I mean, I mean, especially I mean, when, when you're installing the machines, you can you can be doing something else uh, and setting them up. So my suggestion would be to get to this point uh, of doing this on your own at home. Uh, you'll understand. You'll come in here and you'll be understanding it. Some of you see where where some of you still fall down in, and that, that's why I like the lab sim at least. Is you sometimes still fall down just navigating in Windows. You know, you still have prob you still have problems finding things and understanding things in Windows. Now, when you get to the Windows Seven class, you'll have help with that and all that stuff. But you got to spend more time, and that's what's great about setting up this environment is you can just play around, right? Uh, and find things, search for things. Okay. So that's the end of the screencast.